to conquer the 140.6 mile Ironman course and earn that eternal title takes more than physical strength and endurance. For some competitors, it's their own story that will carry them and give them strength when they need it most. For Tom Dittar, it's different. It's the stories he wears on his wrist that drive him forward, the stories of others. It's shocking. Fighting a different battle. It just rocks your entire world. A battle that's taken them off their course and brought them here to the Children's Oncology Ward at Sacred Heart Hospital. The last thing you're, you ever expect a doctor to tell you is that your child has cancer. Many of their stories sound the same. They found a mass on his chest. And that's when we found out that he had a brain tumor. When she said cancer, I was absolutely floored. And then we started chemo a week after that. Stories of hardship. And then when he was in pain, there was really nothing that you could do. And it's awful to watch your child be in pain and know that they can't fix it and you can't fix it. And he just has to deal with it. Stories of strength. He never cried. He never complained. He's brought a lot of strength to us, and he's a fighter for sure. And that just gives you hope. So many sick children have spent their childhood inside these walls. You hear the doctor tell you your child has cancer, and you're like, no way, not, not mine. And too many of them never stood a chance. Anna was a beautiful little girl with every kind of personality you could imagine. She was sweet and sparkly and stubborn and feisty, and she was healthy one day, and the next day she was diagnosed with stage four hepatoblastoma. In 2010, six-year-old Anna Schindler was diagnosed with liver cancer. Five months later, she was gone. Her family could never be the same. What I got from Anna was not what I expected. Um, strength and courage. And one of the things that really struck me was she was concerned about the other kids. She didn't want to come home because she was afraid the other kids would get it. She didn't like that. She was going through it, and she didn't want anybody else to go through it. Then out of Anna's tragic passing, something beautiful grew. We still knew the Sacred Heart still existed. And the kids that were at Sacred Heart were still here going through their battle and that the support they needed was still there. So these proud parents launched the Anna Schindler Foundation to support families fighting childhood cancer, the same fight that forever changed their family. It's a way to give back and hopefully even if it's just for five seconds to lighten their load of what they're going through because it's a really dark place at certain times during treatment. But if we can just, through Anna's love, just give it forward to another family to help them out. Anna may be gone, but her story continues to inspire. That's just what it's done for Tom Tatar. We've known the Schindler family for a long time. She's a sweet, sweet girl, and she fought her cancer heroically, just patiently, just really amazing girl. Dittar has trained relentlessly for a year. Through daily aches and pains, more than 300 hours pushing himself harder than he ever has. And this Sunday, on the fourth anniversary of Anna's passing, the 53-year-old will compete in his first Ironman as a fundraiser for the Anna Schindler Foundation. I've never done an event for 17 or 15 or 14 hours, so you need a lot of interior strength to get you through. Strength he'll find when he looks down at his wrist. These are their hospital bracelets that their family have given me. The hospital band of Holden, a two-year-old fighting a brain tumor. He is almost done with the um, treatment regimen, the chemo, and um, after that we'll check and our hope is that the tumor is dead. Jackson, who is nearing remission at three years old. Right now, uh, there's no evidence of a tumor, and he is leading a pretty normal, happy little three-year-old life. And Eric, who's battling to reach his second birthday. That's all I want to do with him is just be his mom. Eight hospital vans from eight children Dittar has never met, but whose stories, just like Anna's, keep him going. Wrapped around that hospital van is the fear that children go through when they go to the hospital. And if things are getting tough, I'm gonna look down and 
see Jackson and Eric and David and Holden. It's amazing. He's doing an awesome job. He doesn't even realize how many families he's touching. You just get emotional thinking about when you think about all the time, you know, that you spend training and I think about the kids. So, God willing, I'll be able to make it across the finish line. Life presents all kinds of struggles. Some we ask for. They're the ones that keep me going. Some we never would. Everybody always tells us we're so strong and um, we, they could never do this, but it's really not strength that gets us out of bed every day, it's love. And for Tom Dittar, that's what the hours of training and the grueling Ironman triathlon are about. Reminding these families, they are not alone. The Ironman is a long day. There are gonna be ups and downs in the race. You gotta figure out how to get through the down times. Jason Weidman knows all about downtimes. When I was five years old, I was diagnosed with um, leukemia. I remember going through chemotherapy. And there was a time there that the prognosis for him was really not very good. His kneecaps were honeycombed and eaten away. A large portion of his shoulder bone actually was gone. My dad worked really hard. My mom worked really hard too. He never wanted to stay in bed and be ill. He just had this determination. It brought our family closer together, I mean, through those challenges for sure. And then five years, uh, they basically said he was in remission for good. At 10 years old, Jason's fight was over. His cancer was gone. That's when he vowed physical strength would never be a problem again. For anybody who's had cancer, I think it's really good to be involved in something. From then on, Jason had two priorities, family and athletics. Sports became his outlet. Well, I always ran. It was kind of a way to keep me positive. As he grew up, Jason continued to push his body to its limits. But one limit he feared was the Ironman. I did a couple of small triathlons. Um, and the first one, I, was, I just did horribly. So I thought, you know, this, this isn't really for me. But last June, the week of Ironman Coeur d'Alene, Jason changed his mind. I was at my desk working. I got a call from my mom, and she said that they were um, at the hospital, and my dad wasn't feeling well, and they found a very large uh, lemon-sized mass in his brain, which turned out to be a tumor. And I just still remembered everything about having to go through this with Jason. There were so many similarities. It was different, and yet it was really the same. Jason's father, Mark, was diagnosed with glioblastoma, brain cancer. Doctors told the family he had about one year to live. After my dad was diagnosed, it was, um, my athletics kind of took on a new meaning. That was almost a sign for me, too. Hey, this is something that you've kind of been afraid of. Um, let's make this a good thing. I know an Ironman, you know, pales in comparison to that work that he did for me and the family. Um, but I thought it would be just an awesome tribute to do that in his honor. Then Jason's journey began. Training day in and day out. Testing strength and commitment. On a long road only traveled by those willing to invest everything to accomplish something so few have become an Iron Man. This is definitely the, the biggest challenge I've ever taken on. Luckily, Jason knows how to take on a challenge. And this time, he did it with one goal, to cross the finish line with his father by his side. Sadly, that won't happen. About, um, oh, in April, started to deteriorate really quickly to the point where he was confined to a bed. And um, together, we just took care of him the best that we could until he passed on. Mark Weidman passed away on May 4th, 31 years after his son beat cancer 
and just a month and a half before Jason planned to honor him with a hug at the finish line. And yet, this 41-year-old's legs are still moving, perhaps faster than ever. It's not real yet. I'm thinking that it's going to be more real once I accomplish this goal. One of the last times that Jason came to visit, he went to talk to Mark in the bedroom, and when he came out, he was crying, and he said, I just told my dad everything that I needed to tell him before he passed away. They talked about Iron Man and, and how important it was and how much it meant to Jason and to Mark together that he completed. There were a couple of really, really rough days when I was in the pool and I was doing a long swim. I was thinking, uh, I don't know if my dad's gonna be there to watch me finish. What am I even doing here? And then it dawned on me, that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because he can't do it, and I, and I want to do this for him. This Sunday, Jason Weidman will carry his father for 140.6 miles. He will be in my head all the time and in my heart all the time. As the boy who barely stood a chance becomes an Iron Man. He will be encouraging me. I can hear him right now. Just saying, go Jace, go Jace, and uh, I'm going to be hearing that a lot, I know that. I was born a little early, a little young, and when I was two or three years old, and I was out walking my parent apparently, and my dad told me that I was turning really blue, because I wasn't getting enough oxygen in my body. So I ended up going into the hospital and did a lot of tests. And that's when they found out that I had a heart murmur and had a hole in my heart. And my esophagus was connected to my lungs. I had two hernias and my intestines were hanging out. So I had a lot of um, birth defects, including being deaf. Throughout his early years, we never knew if he was gonna make it. Uh, it, was, it was pretty scary. Given a 15% chance to live, Surgery saved his life. I survived somehow and came out of the other end. But some 25 years later, life would throw yet another obstacle Zane's way. Three and a half years ago, I passed out. So I ended up going back to the doctor to get some more tests. Turned out I had a lot of irregular heartbeat. I didn't know what was going to happen, what was going to happen with my life. And then finally, the doctor told me I needed to get a pacemaker, so I went in for surgery again. The pacemaker saved his life in more ways than one. Before I got my pacemaker, I was a little negative. I was frustrated with life. In some way, it might be a curse, but at the same time, it's a blessing because every day I wake up and I can feel it and I'm always touching it. And it reminds me that I'm here every day and I thank God every morning when I wake up. Another mission lies ahead another hurdle to clear. He's the kind of guy that always needs a mountain to climb. You throw the gauntlet down, I'm gonna crush it. I finally decided maybe I should just do it because I felt that I could do it and I felt it would be a good example for other people. It's not a verbal inspiration, it's a silent inspiration. There's a bond you don't wanna break. And because you don't wanna let him down, but he doesn't wanna let you down. No doubt the day will be long. Someone in that situation just feels like Superman. Filled with peaks and valleys. And it's going to be unbelievable to see him cross the finish line. Highs and lows. It's going to be one of the highlights of my entire life, I'm sure. A life journey. He's going to be an Iron Man. All dedicated. Just don't quit. To never giving up. Because you never know. If, if you try one more time, push it a little bit further, you might succeed right there. That makes all the difference in the world.